Hello there folks, and welcome to something a little different. Now today is not going to be a very special how I paint things, because instead what we're going to do is make some terrain. It's not something I do all that often on the channel, but because this is so simple, I really thought it would be worth sharing, especially with Bolt Action version 3 coming along with Winter Armies in the box, but whether you're making a board for Bolt Action, or Warhammer 40,000, or anything with a bit of snow involved, this will work for anything. You can turn a white sheet into a winter landscape with just a few bits of scatter terrain to help you sell the look. Now all of the materials for this are either out of the garden or you know, a matter of a few cents. I think the most expensive thing I've used is the tufts which you can see poking out through the snow. But the process is really simple. I'm going to talk through each step in a fair bit of detail because one or two things are going to be important. But yeah, let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is look at some of the materials we're using. And starting with that is the bases. These you'll see I have 3D printed. Uh, these are FDM. They're nice and quick. Uh, the reason why I've printed them is that I just like the, the regular shapes. I'm a little bit fussy, so this suits me down to the ground. What you can make these out of as well, uh, this fella here, for comparison, this is a 60mm base. So if you're thinking about um, weapons teams, you know this is the size base that they come on. These are a little bit bigger. Uh, you can also use things like coasters for mugs and such like that. And as well, um, if you want a, a much bigger piece, what you could do would be to grab an old CD. Just pop a bit of tape across the hole and you'll be golden. You can use it as a base then. I'd suggest that for the scatter scenery that we're going to be working on, anything bigger than your hand is going to be too big. You know, then you're getting into a full-on almost diorama, but for these little bits that we're going to scatter around the table, these shapes, these sizes are fine. Now the sticks and stones that I've got in front of me, they are, coincidentally, sticks and stones. I haven't done anything more complex than go into the garden and grab whatever looked about right. So these stones, uh, in order to prep these, what I've done is picked them up, taken them inside, and popped them in a, you know, popped them in a little bit of hot water with some dish soap and just scrubbed them off made them nice and clean. I'm not going to do anything more than that to these. Uh, when it comes time to paint them, uh, for our winter scenery, I'm not going to paint them at all. These are, these are perfect. For desert scenery, what you can do is prime them at the same time that you prime the rest of the base. But since we're not going to be painting most of these, it's not going to matter too much. I will show you an example of that later on. But for now, just pick some cool stones. And all you got to do then is super glue them to the base. Now, because of the irregular surfaces, uh, it's much easier just to dollop a huge amount of super glue onto the base. And once you're satisfied that's going to be enough, drop your rock on there, wiggle it around just to make sure that you've got the, the glue onto a few contact points, and then leave it. Uh, these other ones that I've prepared earlier, you can see they are glued quite fast. Easy as. Now, our very impressive branches are a slightly different proposition because they require a little bit more prep work in order that we can use them on a base. This has come off of, I think it's with blackberry bush? Blueberries? Blackberries? Little guys. And uh, it's about the right thickness for quite a hefty tree. Uh, the trees that we put on our battlefields tend to be wildly out of scale for what a tree is actually like, but anything thicker than your pinky is going to be too big. Um, unless you have very small pinkies, but that's up to you. You can decide then what you've got. Uh, what I've done is cut quite some long sections because they'll be easier to work with. You, know, you don't want to have to fight with bits that are too small. Once you've cut them out, what you do is pop these, and I've got a few other bits here, pop them on a bit of baking paper into your oven because you need to bake them. What I did is put these down for about 40 minutes to an hour at just under 100 degrees Celsius. Nice and low, nice and slow. What you're doing is just heating the interior so that it's drying out properly, and it's going to kill any of the greeblies that are in there, which would make it rot. The other important thing about baking it like that is that... Oh gosh, that's, that's really quite firm. <laughs> it will snap instead of bending. Now that's important for some of these other pieces that I've got. They're slightly thinner, but for these big chunky guys, I want the snap, and we'll see why in a second. 
So it's up to you if you do want to build these looking like they are uh, barricades, which is kind of what I'm going to do, but you can also do a wrecked tree kind of look. Uh, particularly artillery blasts and stuff like that are going to be quite fun to try and replicate with these. Uh, this one is not quite thick enough for a full-on tree, so what I'm going to do is just get an old pair of clippers, and rather than cutting cleanly through, I want to wiggle them back and forth and get a nice snapped tip there, so it looks a bit more realistic. I'll do the same to the other end. And now I've got a log which has been prepared by the infantry who are taking cover behind it. Now I'm going to glue this down with a few of its mates in the same way as I did the stones. And then it is just a case of picking a few spots where you want more of them to go down and try and make it look relatively unnatural for a change because we want this to look as though some guys have been barricading themselves behind these. So if you're worried about the size of them, uh, what you can do is grab a miniature and just stand it alongside. If it looks too thick for a guy to hold, it might very well have been, so don't glue it on. But if it looks like somebody could have carried it, away you go. So have some fun with this. After a little bit of time spent building up the shapes, you'll have something that looks like this. Now don't worry if the, the sizes and what have you don't make a lot of sense. You're just looking to build up the bulk, because a lot of this is going to be covered under snow anyway. The purpose of this is just so that there's something that we can see in any gaps that we leave behind. So, like I said, some of these are little bits. It'll be cool, don't worry. Now what I've got here, this is going to be one of our tree sections. So I've got, that's about inch and a half, maybe two inches. Any bigger than this is going to look a little strange. But I've cut down the bottom there quite carefully so that it is flat. But then we want to create that blasted you know, artillery barrage effect. So rather than cutting it sideways, I'm going to get where I can get a grip with the clippers and just start mincing away at it. Oh dear, that split right down the center, but that's honestly probably pretty good. Uh, we can start gripping with the clippers and pulling, splintering. You want this to look like it's really come to bits under a barrage. Um, you can look up, <laughs> you can actually look up what this looks like. It's pretty horrifying. I certainly would not have wanted to be under artillery barrage like this, but just that, oops, yeah, whatever. The more random and gnarly it looks, um, the better, I would say. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it like it is there. Then, with a fairly generous dollop of super glue, let's pop this fella on another base and definitely hold it there for a little bit just to make sure that it is going to stick. Now, once this has dried enough for it to hold upright, what I'm going to do is put a little ring of PVA around the base just to solidify that join. Now, you could also hot glue this into place, but I'm looking for ways to do this with stuff you're likely to have on hand. Now that doesn't need to be completely dry for what we're going to be doing. What I'll grab is some PVA, thin down with a little bit of water, and we're going to go ahead and base these. So chuck this on, and don't worry if you do end up going over the edge of any brushes or bushes or anything like that, because again, it isn't going to matter. We're going to cover most of this. And then the sheet of paper underneath isn't so much to protect the, uh, the surface I'm working on, but just so that I can sprinkle on my sand, and the excess, when I'm finished, it'll just scoop, fold the paper, and put that back in my little container. Any gaps? Again, whatever. We're going to cover this in so much snow, it will not matter. So I'm going to finish off these other stands. Uh, I do suggest add a little bit too much, uh, because it will settle a bit better, I tend to find. Now at this point, you could go ahead and prime them, and that's what I've done with this fella here. Uh, these are some cheap trees from Amazon. These are hot glued to the base and then the uh, stones and what have you built up around them. But I managed to pop off these leafy bits and then primed it all brown, dry brushed the base and the trees. So this took a little bit more paint, uh, not very much more work. The end result's pretty cool. But for the snowy ones, we're not going to have to prime them. We're going to move straight on to coloring in the base. Now, don't be a sausage and use really expensive paint to do your basing at this sort of scale. What I've got came from, where was it? This was from Müller. And, uh, you know, any 
acrylic poster paint sort of stuff will do the job here. Uh, this stuff is super thick. So this is going to last me, I don't know, about 40 years or so. And once you've got your dollops in there, go ahead, squirt in some water. And I'm going to start mixing this up. Now I want a fairly thin paste. Not quite like a, a wash. But I definitely don't want it to be as, as thick as it was coming out of that pot, my word. But once you're satisfied with that, you can start applying it to your bases. Now, make it thinner than you would probably think you want to, uh, because you want it to settle and start running as you apply it. Uh, but you can also be pretty generous. This is going to need to go outside again to dry, but I'm not worried about that. And as with everything else so far, if you can't reach it, don't worry, we're going to jam snow on there. Now once these are dry, you can go ahead and either dry brush a light layer of something like um, brown sand or dark sand over the top, but I'm not going to bother. Um, I quite like the, the dark color that this is, especially with it being quite so thinned down, this will look fine as it is. You can go ahead and apply a little bit of static grass if you prefer, but I'm going to use little bits of these tufts. Uh, these are from Army Painter, and I've also got a handful from the old Citadel boxes as well. Uh, I quite like using the Army Painter ones because they're quite sticky uppy, if that makes sense. And when you see what I'm going to do with them, that'll probably be a little bit clearer why I like that. But let's chuck some grass on these bad boys now. So finally, we've got all our little patches of scenery there. And you could chuck them on the table like this. Obviously, I would still paint the, uh, the rims on them to look a little tidier. But we're going to go ahead and mix up our snow paste. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about this in the past, about using baking soda for uh, snow paste. People ask quite regularly, does it yellow? Well, I've got some that I have used about three years ago, and those miniatures still haven't yellowed. And there's a theory why. Because you've got both baking soda and bicarbonate of soda, essentially pure baking soda. Now, the difference is that in some baking soda sachets, what you're going to find is that there is a, a what is it, a flow agent or something similar in there. I think it's cream of tartar or tartaric acid or something. At any rate, pure bicarbonate of soda doesn't have anything additional in it. Now, that's what I've always been using. So if that makes a difference, I'm not 100% certain. I've never had it yellow, so who knows? At any rate, if you want at least three years, <laughs> go ahead and use what I'm using. Uh, Kaiser Natron, this is uh, obviously German, but wherever you can get pure bicarbonate of soda, use this if you can. So into a little cuppy goes some, most of. It's quite a bit. I want to make quite a bit. And then what we're going to mix it in with is some water. I've got my little squirtly doobla there. And some PVA. Uh, so this is wood glue, uh, Elmer's wood glue if you're in the States. Uh, just mix in about half and half water and glue. And then get yourself a raggedy old brush. Use the stick end, of course. And start mixing up your paste. Now, the exact consistency of this is a little difficult to describe. But uh, if you've ever you know, used egg whites and baking... Beat to stiff peaks is pretty good advice. Uh, it works quite similarly for this. So at the moment, as I'm swizzling this around, you see if I run a brush through it, it flows back in quite quickly. So that is probably a little too thin. I'm going to add some more baking soda. And you can back and forth with this until you're happy with the consistency. My recommendation is you want it to be a little bit, a little bit runnier than you might think. Uh, but... Yeah, it's up to you. It won't matter too much if it is too firm. It'll just be a little bit more difficult to apply. Okay, so this, for example, where I'm getting a cloudy consistency, this will go on, but it's a little bit too thick for me. This is going to be a, a pain to, to slather on. So I'm going to add just a little more PVA. Now comes the fun part. And I honestly, I say that quite sarcastically a lot of the time, but this really is the fun part. Dollop out. Big walloping brushfuls of this stuff. And you can see why I want it to be a little bit runnier than I might want, because it will actually come off the brush. But scoop this out. And you want to start applying a pretty thick layer of this. 
going straight over the top of things like the tufts or any grass you've applied. And I'm going to need both hands for this. Really spend a second caking it on there. You can spread it out as much as you want. And this is unlike something like uh, Valhalla and Blizzard, where anything that is white as you're applying this is going to stay white. It's not a, a medium that's going to become translucent. It is white baking soda. So away we go. Let's cover over all of this stuff. You might recall what I said about gap filling. Yep, just jam it on there and it will settle. Easy as. Remember some areas to leave just a little bit of the wood visible. It'll take roughly an hour before these are touch dry, but before you do go putting them on the table and playing games with them, let them dry for a full 24 hours so that it is rock hard. And it will go rock hard. It is seriously just a dense lump of white fluff. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead, I'm going to paint the base rims on them, and yeah, they'll be ready to chuck on the table, add just a little bit of visual interest without having to, you know, do whole forests worth of stuff. So yeah, I'm now going to take these and paint the base rims, and we'll call them done. So let's get some photos once they've got all of that finished off, and uh, yeah. So if you've enjoyed that one, let me know in the comments, because it's a little different to what I would ordinarily do, but I have got, funnily enough, winter stuff on the brain. You don't have to paint anything, you don't have to fuss, it is literally just stuff you'll find in the garden and a bit of baking soda. Just winter. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.